everybody welcome to transformation tuesday bible study today we're going to be talking about divine healing and health care according to the word of god and god's limitless modes of healing but before we begin i want us to pray father in the name of jesus i pray that everybody watching understands how you heal directly through other people through other christian doctors nurses and caretakers lord and that they apply this to their lives, Lord, because that's what's going to help them grow in their knowledge of you and be able to bring other people into the kingdom of God through your word and through the gospel, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. We will be using the New King James Version of the Bible, but you can use any acceptable version. Okay, let's begin. So everybody, let's open up our Bibles to Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. That's Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. Okay, so let's continue on. Genesis chapter 3, verses 11 through 18. That's Genesis chapter 3, verses 11 through 18. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. And the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception in pain. You shall bring forth children, your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife, and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, You shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake, in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall spring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. So let's continue on. Genesis chapter 3, verses 19 through 24. That's Genesis chapter 3, verses 19 through 24. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. And Adam called his wife Eve, because she was the mother of all living. Also for Adam and his wife the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us, to know good and evil. And now lest he put out his hand, 
and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him out of the garden to till the ground from which he was taken. So he drove out the man and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the, the way to the tree of life. So I know this was a long chapter, but it was important that we see this because this is the root of why there's sicknesses and diseases in the world. Eve and Adam and Eve did not listen to God when he said, do not eat from the tree of life. They ate from the tree of life because Eve was deceived by the serpent. She listened to him, okay? And then Adam followed suit and ate with her. So now we women are in enmity with men, of course. You know, men rule over us and we're always in enmity with Satan. And one of the things that this caused was sicknesses and diseases. Okay, so there's different types of sicknesses and diseases out there, so many different ones. And they're caused by mental issues, uh, biological issues, genetic issues, and also spiritual issues. Because what Adam and Eve did affected us physically and spiritually. And sometimes it could be a combination of all of those things causing a disease. And that's why there's different ways of treating these things that are acceptable according to the word of God. And we always have Satan after us in different ways, whether we're saved or not. We're deceived into uh, practicing worldly things from birth. From birth, we are sinful beings, okay? And we're tricked into different things as we grow up. Even as Christians, Christians, people who call themselves Christians are still very, very deceived, even. Because Satan is always on our backs because of what um, Adam and Eve did. Okay? And that's why there's also treatments that are of Satan that a lot of Christians are adopting right now. That's also the reason. So it's important that we understand this root of all this, which is the sin of Adam and Eve that led to sicknesses. So sicknesses will always be on this earth. So we will always need ways to treat it that are acceptable to God. So that's why it's important that we understand this part of it in order to fully go into other modes of treatment, um, the spiritual gift of healing, and everything that involves healthcare and healing in the Bible. Okay, so everybody open up your Bibles to Psalms 103 verses 1 through 5. That's Psalms 103 verses 1 through 5. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. All right, now everybody open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 through 24, and bookmark John chapter 3, verses 14 through 16, as well as Colossians chapter 1, verses 13 through 14. Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 through 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of disease among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, paralytics, and he healed them. John chapter 3, verses 14 through 16. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Colossians chapter 1 verses 13 through 14. He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sin. So because of what uh, Adam and Eve did, 
In the Old Testament, in order for them to have a relationship with God, meaning the Israelites and God's people, they had covenants with him. And now we can have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ was sacrificed for our sins. And once we repent of those sins and we believe in Jesus Christ, we will have eternal life in heaven. Meaning that when we're resurrect, when we die, we're resurrected and we go to heaven and we have everlasting life. So, um, so that is very important to know and understand. And not only that, God also provides for healing in his word as we just read in Psalm 103 especially for people who are righteous and they're living right. So we must continue to be repentant. And when Jesus was on this earth, okay, his ministry was to get, teach people the word of God, to t have people repent and believe on him. And he also healed people of so many different diseases and maladies. Okay, he really healed a multitude of people. And now there's even people who may have that gift of healing that could do that same thing. Whether that's through them having that spiritual gift of healing, or even that they're doctors and they're Christians and they're able to heal all those types of diseases. All that was provided to us through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, to be honest with you. Because when he ascended into heaven and the Holy Spirit came down and we are filled with that Holy Spirit as believers, you have that capability to heal as well. Jesus prayed over the sick and they were healed. He touched the sick and they were healed. Okay. And then of course, there were even physicians back then healing people like Luke. So that is part of God's plan for us since Adam and Eve pretty much ruined it for us. Okay. We need to have healing in our lives. And it could have been even worse if you think about it, if Jesus wasn't sacrificed for our sins. So it's important that we know and understand that. Let's move to the next part. So everybody open up your Bibles to Exodus chapter 15 verses 25 through 26. That's Exodus chapter 15 verses 25 through 26. And bookmark 2 Kings chapter 20 verses 4 through 5 as well as Psalms 103 uh, verses 2 through 4. Exodus chapter 15 verses 25 through 26. So he cried out to the Lord. And the Lord showed him a tree. And when he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance for them. And there he tested them and said, If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I have brought on the Egyptians. For I am the Lord who heals you. 2 Kings chapter 20 verses 4 through 5. And it happened before Isaiah had gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came to him saying, Return and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, Thus says the Lord, the God of David your father, I have heard your prayer, I have seen your tears, surely I will heal you. On the third day, you shall go up to the house of the Lord. Psalms 103 verses 2 through 4. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. So as we can see, it is in God's will to heal us. Even in the Old Testament, it was in his will to heal his people except they had to keep the covenants keep his commandments pray to him they had to do all these works in order to be healed by him and now we are his people by believing in jesus we're christians okay and he heals us still to this day directly uh, when we pray to him in jesus name through other people who have the spiritual gift of healing through other doctors and nurses psychologists and psychiatrists Okay, so he provides healing for us because he knows that Adam and Eve messed it up for us and he knows the diseases on this earth. So he has that solution of healing again, directly through him by us praying for ourselves, by people praying for us, by people with the spiritual gift of healing. And again, doctors, nurses, psychologists, psychiatrists, dentists, you name it. All right. And so we have to thank God for all these different modes that he made available to us, knowing that we are, we are in a fallen world. 
And again, in order to receive that healing from him, we have to make sure that we continue to stay righteous, continue to stay in his word, even like they did in the Old Testament. Okay, even though we have Jesus Christ right now, we have to continue to be repentant of our sins every single day in order to have that provision be available to us. And it is in his will for that to be available to us. So these are the ways that we obtain it. Let's go on. So everybody open up your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 53 verses 4 through 5. That's Isaiah chapter 53 verses 4 through 5. And also bookmark James chapter 5 verses 14 through 16. That's James chapter 5 verses 14 through 16. Isaiah chapter 53 verses 4 through 5. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. James chapter 5, verses 14 through 16. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another, and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Okay, so open up your Bible to Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 through 24, and bookmark Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 through 16, as well as John chapter 6, verses 37 through 38. And Hebrews chapter 1, verses 2 through 3. Matthew chapter 4, verses 23 through 24. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people. Then his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him all sick people who were afflicted with various diseases and torments, and those who were demon-possessed, epileptics, and paralytics, and he healed them. Matthew chapter 8, verses 14 through 16. Now when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. So he touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she arose and served them. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed, and he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick. John chapter 6, verses 37 through 38. All that the Father gives me will come to me, and the one who comes to me I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 2 through 3 has in these last days spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. So Jesus was God's representation in human form. He had his characteristics, and one of those characteristics, of course, was healing. Jesus had the power to heal. He healed just by touching people, by giving them the word of God, by delivering them from demons and spirits, okay? And Jesus died for our sins, of course. And through Jesus Christ, we also have um, access to healing through prayer and also through other members of the body of Christ and all that. Okay, but we must pray for it because Satan, that's what he does. Satan and his demons, they always want to attack us in some type of way, you know, and make us sick. And sometimes it's not Satan. Sometimes it's biological and, or whatever. But here's the thing. God can take care of all of that. And he has his different modes of doing that. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But he has his different modes of doing that. And once we pray to him and he gives us that answer, we have to accept it and move on with it and take that and be grateful that we are healed. 
we are healed in the name of Jesus. And God does still heal to this day. All right? So we need to make sure that we use all the avenues available to us. And we also have a responsibility as Christians, by the way, to stay healthy, eat healthy, eat right, exercise, work out. He sees all that too. He sees when it's the junk that made us sick and it's not the enemy himself. Or the enemy could have pushed you to even um, overeating because you're depressed or because you're anxious. So he can see all that. So we also have a responsibility to maintain our health to work out, to do those things that we need to do so that we don't end up in a bad place. We have what that's called in the healthcare field is called preventative care. We have a responsibility to do that as well. But then when we do pray to the Lord for it and he sends it to us in form of a doctor or a nurse or whoever, we cannot deny that. We have to accept that, you know what, and even if that person is not a Christian, maybe God wants that person to heal you so that you can bring that person to Christ during your healing. You never know. So we have to follow his his template when it comes to this. Okay, so everybody, open up your Bibles to Luke chapter 9, verses 1 through 2, and also bookmark Luke chapter 10, verses 8 through 9, and bookmark Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. Luke chapter 9, verses 1 through 2. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. He sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Luke chapter 10, verses 8 through 9. Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you and heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Okay, let's continue on. Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. That's Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 10. Now Peter and John went up together and to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried. When they lay daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes on him, with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he leaping up stood and walked and entered the temple with them walking, leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew that it was he who sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Okay, so let's continue on. Luke chapter 10, verses 30 through 35. That's Luke chapter 10, verses 30 through 35. Then Jesus answered and said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, 
and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. So Jesus had his 12 disciples. He gave them that power to heal and deliver people from spirits and demons. He gave them that power. Okay, and then also 72 of his faithful followers had that same power as they were spreading the gospel. Because honestly, some people can't even hear the gospel. People back then couldn't hear the gospel without those gifts. And guess what? There's still people today who cannot hear the gospel without getting healed or getting delivered. They can't even appreciate it. Okay, they're so downtrodden or so depressed that the gospel isn't helping them. Sometimes they need somebody to heal them of that. Okay, and so that is how he healed even back then. Then also when Jesus died and ascended into heaven, his Holy Spirit came down and empowered his followers and is still empowering us as followers of Jesus Christ today for service in many different ways whether that's through being a prophet or a prophetess, okay, a teacher, a pastor, somebody who is very giving because they've been empowered in that way, somebody who is merciful. These are all gifts that come from the Holy Spirit. And these are all things that Jesus did while he was on this earth. He had all of them, every single one of them, okay? And right now, today, the Lord heals through many different modes. He heals on his own. Okay, he heals through pastors and elders anointing people with oil when they confess of their sins and they're sick and they lay hands on them. He also heals through people who have that spiritual gift of healing, all right, where they can just give you that one touch and heal you. It's happened to me actually. Then there's also doctors, nurses, psychiatrists, psychologists, physical therapists that are Christians, that are his hands and feet as well. And it's important that we don't disparage them and make them feel less than because of what they studied. You know, God uses us in so many different ways, you know, and if, if, if it wasn't for the studies that I took, I wouldn't be able to see this either. But that's the whole point. When you've submitted to the Holy Spirit, he completely empowers you and takes over. So can you imagine a Holy Spirit-filled doctor or nurse? How wonderful that is for the kingdom of God. So we should not disparage them. And no, the Hippocratic Oath isn't used anymore and hasn't been used since the 40s. Most Christian doctors and nurses have their own oath or no oath at all because they don't need that, especially as believers. Okay, so we have to respect that and understand that a lot of the modes that they're using, they're accepted because they've been proven to work. They've been proven to work and not just fall for these alternative and holistic methods because they sound good or they sound like, oh, it's it's not as so-called corrupt. Listen, you can find corruption in anything. If you wanted to look up the bad side of Christianity right now, you will find a whole lot. It doesn't mean that all of it is true. So we have to know to read things with discernment or else we can fall into traps. The problem with this alternative medicine thing is that a lot of it is divination and can yoke you up with demons and spirits then ruin your relationship with God. And so because you didn't follow the right course of treatment that he would have led you to, you're now yoked up with demons and spirits. You now have to get deliverance. It's just not necessary. It's just not necessary. All because of some propaganda that people are spreading that have no clue what they're talking about, to be honest with you. And yes, we still, as members of the body of Christ, have our own responsibility to practice preventative care, which means that we're exercising, we're eating right, we're not overeating. These are things that you could even find online if you wanted to. Okay? So we have to make sure that we hold ourselves accountable too. Especially with all the information that God has available to us. Okay? So I really hope that this blessed you. We're going to talk a little bit more about this in uh, part two of this series. And also join us next Monday as we continue to talk about living the word. That's going to be our devotional. Thank you so much and have a blessed week. Thank you.